Okay, so this is David with Longboard Technology, and today I'm going to be looking at the effect of bushing seat thickness on the on the performance of a truck. So to help me with this, I brought along my incredible cardboard truck model of science, and what we've got going on here is we have the kingpin, this long thing in the center right here, goes up and down. At the top of the kingpin we have the kingpin nut, which is right there. And then right here, this little flange there, that's the nylock sticking out of the king out of the kingpin nut. We've got the, the, the cupped washer right here. And the cupped washer is hugging the yellow bushings, which, which are which are right here. So we also have the hanger cross section showing us the bushing seats. So the bushing seat is the surface that the bushing interacts with that it's pushed into and that it has to that it has to conform to as the truck pivots which provides the resistance of the truck. So how the how the bushing seat works or how the hanger works is the hanger of course pivots around um, but it actually pivots around the center of the bushing seat directly between right in the middle between the two bushings um, and um, and then that, that pivot travels from this point in the center of the two bushings down to the pivot cup and that, that line becomes the, the pivot axis of, of the truck. So, let's see, so what we have here is so as I lean the deck and I'll lean it up to 20 degrees what happens is it compresses the bushing up here and it decompresses the bushing over here. So all the action and the resistance of the truck comes from over here where it's compressed. And then as you, the bushing is pushing in the opposite direction that you're pushing. So it's, we've got the equal and opposite forces going on right here. And as you, re as you release your compressive force, the bushing still has its, um, it's the opposite force, which pushes the, the hanger back to straight. So this is um, modeling a fairly typical bushing seat where they try to make it very thin. And the reason they make it very thin is because of this rotating action. So what happens if you make a thicker bushing seat, like this one right here, is something quite interesting. So as I rotate, so as the truck is flat, you'll notice that the bushing lines up with these two marks here and here. As I rotate the, the truck out again to the 20 degrees, you'll see now the bushing lines up with these two marks here and here. So effectively what is happening is because the distance between the pivot and the face of the bushing seat has gotten bigger. See here, the distance from here to here and here to here on both sides has gotten a lot bigger. So what happens is as you turn, in order to conform to, to meet this the bushing and being tied to the kingpin, the bushing has to actually slide across the face of the bushing seat. And this can create a lot of friction and in general it is considered to make the um, performance of the bushing degraded. Um, and it's it's been generally considered to be undesirable. So um, why would someone have a very thick bushing seat? Well there's um, a few reasons why. One is, well, if you make the bushing seat too thin, it can break. So let's say we have, so old bears had this problem. The bushing seat was really thin and it would snap. And it would snap and then your bushing seat's gone. And it was good because you had thin bushing, thin bushing seats that made the bushing engagement very good. But you know, it was too thin so the bushing seats weren't able to support the weight and um, stresses that the rider put on it. 
But I think the main reason why we've traditionally seen thicker bushing seats is because people started experimenting putting spherical bearings in the center of, of their bushing seats. And that, that spherical bearing became a fixed point that would create a much better pivot axis, a much stronger pivot axis that would, inter that would go down again to the pivot cup. So you've got a, a nice fixed solid um, spherical uh, bush bearing on one side and then you have the pivot cup on the other and it creates something that's very, um, it's very, uh, very precise with very little slop. Um, but making room for that bearing pushes the bushings apart. Um, more recently, we've got a new truck that's come out and it's got a bushing. Oops. Get the stack going here. It's got a bushing that goes inside the pivot cup or inside the inside the bearing seat. And what this does is this bu this bushing is it's got a hole through it and it goes onto the kingpin just like everything else. Um, but it also butts up against oh, this is backwards. Um, it also butts up against the cutouts in the hanger. And so what happens is so. This is fixed, and it's got this all this surface interaction there. And so what happens is you can't move the hanger side to side very much like you could on a setup like this, where the only thing holding it in the center, it doesn't have a pin. It's held in place side to side by the bushings. So by having a bushing like this, you're able to eliminate this slop, make it much stronger, and have less side to side motion. And this is um, um, this is basically a, uh, a plug, so you can you can you can get plugs that'll go into uh, and fill the fill the same role into other trucks. Um, but the issue is, um, if you look at here, so as I turn the deck again to 20 degrees, so this piece can't rotate with the hanger because it's fixed to the kingpin. So look at this. You've got this um, scenario here where you've got the bear, the bushing and it's having to conform to this shape of the hanger on this side and the uh, kingpin on the other and what results is it's compressing like that here, like that here, it's decompressing here, it's decompressing here. So. Bushings um, are very progressive in their resistance when in compression. And because this thickness here is so small, that resistance progresses very quickly and you end up restricting the motion of the deck. So that's why, um, that's why on the new Rogue trucks, this bushing is so big is so that they can eliminate some of that stress and distribute it between a larger mass of urethane um, and give it so that this doesn't, um, uh, it allows you to have less restricted lean. Um, but of course the consequence of that is now you have to have a bigger um, hanger or a, a thicker uh, bushing seat. And so now you're also dealing with the problem of this bushing having to slide side to side. And even with this oversized bushing that goes inside, or this, this oversized space for this bushing that goes inside the, the bushing seat, um, it still is going to have a more progressive um, buildup of resistance inside the, inside this bushing because you are working with such a small space um, between the kingpin and the edge of the uh, of the of the space inside the bushing seat for it. So what does that mean? I'm not completely sure. I haven't had the chance to ride the trucks yet and I probably won't because they're quite expensive. So 
the effect on the writing, that would be um, a lot of speculation. But going by the theory, we can expect it to be a little more restrictive than another type of truck that has very big open bushing seats. So typically when people think of the bushing seats, they think about the distance that the bushing is given able to slide around in. So, um, and the rogue trucks essentially don't have the bushing seats. Um, they're very large. But part of that is because the bushing needs to slide side to side. So it needs a lot more larger space. So, I mean, it should have the space it needs to slide around. So it shouldn't be restrictive on the bushing, but there's still a lot going on. So to just do a quick overview, look back at here. The reason why people generally go with very thin bushing seats is because it allows you to have a very tight um, bushing seat on the sides that doesn't need to allow for a lot of room for side-to-side -side motion and that doesn't have to have the bushing sliding around very much and and the goal of that is to have a better performing bushing so there we go my incredible longboard truck model of science and this is longboard technology over and out